In this part of the program, we'll look at distribution poles, pole hardware, and conductors for both primary and secondary distribution systems. The vast majority of overhead distribution poles are single wood poles. Although poles can also be made of other materials, such as concrete or metal. Sometimes the poles are numbered to help in identifying a given pole and the equipment on the pole. The overhead lines are frequently supported on the poles by wood cross arms. Cross arm construction can vary. Some are single cross arms. Some are double cross arms. Many are reinforced with braces, like the wood braces used on this pole. Some cross arms are mounted to the side of a pole. This type is called a side arm or alley arm. It's reinforced with a piece of angle steel called an alley arm brace. Distribution conductors are not always supported by cross arms. For example, here distribution conductors are supported by fiberglass rods using a method of support referred to as armless construction. The conductors on this pole are stacked vertically and supported by insulators that are attached directly to the pole in a method called vertical construction. Regardless of how conductors are supported structurally, they are always electrically insulated from their supports and from other components on the distribution line by insulators. Insulators are made from a variety of materials that resist the flow of electricity. The most common is porcelain. They also come in a variety of sizes, depending on operating conditions and the voltage of the circuit that they're to be used on. For example, here's an insulator that one company may use on their 13.2 kV distribution circuits. And here's one that they may use on their 34.5 kV distribution circuits. But insulators are not always a surefire way of identifying a circuit. For example, the same company that uses this insulator on their 34-5 circuits may use it on one of their 13-2 circuits, especially if they're going to convert that circuit to 34-5 sometime in the future. Now, besides coming in different sizes, insulators also come in different shapes, depending on how the insulator is used. Let's look at a few. A disc insulator is a disc or bell-shaped insulator that is designed to be connected together in strings. Discs can be added or removed from a string to meet any voltage requirement. In distribution systems, disc insulators are typically mounted horizontally to support a conductor either where the conductor dead ends or where the conductor changes directions. A post insulator is a cylindrical insulator that's mounted flush with the support structure. It may be mounted vertically on the tops of poles or cross arms. Or it may be mounted horizontally on the side of a pole. A pin insulator can come in a variety of shapes. In general, it's an insulator that is mounted on a pin, which in turn is bolted to a pole or cross arm. A spool insulator is an insulator that is shaped like a spool. It can be clamped individually to the side of a pole. Or it may be mounted with several spools in a rack on the side of a pole. Spool insulators are primarily used to insulate secondary conductors and neutral wires. Poles, cross arms, brackets, and racks hold distribution conductors up above the ground. And insulators electrically insulate the conductors from their supports and from other distribution system equipment. And as we've seen, the size, shape, and construction of these components can vary widely. The physical appearance of overhead distribution conductors is also varied. Most overhead distribution conductors are made of stranded aluminum. But in some systems, they may be solid copper conductors. Also, most distribution conductors are bare wires. However, some may have a weatherproof covering to protect them from corrosive elements in the air or from abrasion where they pass through trees. 
and some wires are insulated. Insulated wires are often used on overhead lines near playgrounds and schools or where there isn't enough clearance for bare wires. Overhead distribution conductors come in a variety of sizes depending on the material used and its current carrying capacity. In the field, the conductors may be installed a number of different ways. They may be installed as a single phase circuit, a two phase circuit, or a three phase circuit. Three phase primary conductors are normally strung separately and they may be mounted horizontally or vertically. Secondary conductors are typically mounted vertically where the conductors are strung separately as they are here. Secondary conductors may also be wrapped in a bundle. With this kind of installation, insulated secondary hot leads are wrapped around a bare neutral wire that supports them. Where primary and secondary conductors are strung on the same poles, the secondary is normally strung below the primary. Distribution poles sometimes need to be reinforced with anchored wires, called guy wires, to offset the pull of the conductors, the weight of equipment, and other forces that tend to pull the pole over. There are many different kinds of guys. For example, a down guy, which is sometimes called an anchor guy, is a guy that is connected from a pole to an anchor in the ground. A pole guy is connected from one pole to another pole. A sidewalk guy is connected to a pole directed away from the pole by a strut and then connected to an anchor in the ground. Regardless of how guys are constructed, they all serve to reinforce and stabilize poles.